Hi folks, Mr. Ackerman here. Thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can edit a photo just like you do on your phone using the adjustment sliders, but this time on a larger screen like on your laptop or desktop. The reason you'll want to do this is because a larger screen lets you see more detail and you can make better editing decisions. First off, make sure the file is on your computer. I'm working on a Mac. In my downloads folder, I've got this image of the front of the school. Next up, assuming you've already downloaded Photoshop and Adobe Bridge, you're going to search for these apps by typing in Bridge, hitting Enter, and then seeing what happens. Adobe Bridge is going to launch, and this is an app that photographers use to organize their photos and to gather important information. Navigate to the place on your computer where you have the photo that you want to edit. For me, remember, it was my downloads folder, and I'm already there. You can navigate just like you do on any other computer using this panel here. And once you find your photo, click on it once, and you're going to notice information displays on the right here. This is photo information that you may or may not need, but it's good to know where it is. The other thing that's useful here is if you hit the space bar, the photo expands and you get to see it full screen, which is very convenient. Hit the space bar again, and it goes back to the thumbnail. Now, once you've figured out whether you want to edit this photo, either right click or two finger tap on the photo and click open in camera raw. This is going to launch an app that you may or may not have seen before. On the right side of the app, you're going to notice little drop down menus. These have the sliders that you see on your phone and you work them the same way that you normally would edit. The exposure darkens things or brightens things. Let's go a bit darker. Let's increase the contrast a bit, drop the highlights, increase the shadows. These decisions I'm making are really, I'm not thinking them through very much. I'm just doing something to show you what you can do. Once I'm happy that I've made enough changes, I'm going to go and use a different tool. This is in the top right corner, the crop tool. Some people use this first, some people use it after. You got to decide for yourself. When you're cropping, you may wish to use the lock button here. If you lock this, it maintains the same aspect ratio as you click and drag. All the sides are going to move. If you unlock it, you can make the decisions for yourself like that. Once you're happy, hit the enter or return button. And now it's time to open up in the real version of Photoshop. Look for the button called open object. If you don't see it, go to the drop down menu and select it. Once you do that, Photoshop is going to start. This is the Photoshop many of you are familiar with from other courses you may have taken at school. Click and drag the window so it gives you the maximum space. And you might notice, you see I have the crop tool already open from a previous edit. That's over here. If I don't want to do any more cropping, then I'm going to hit the escape button like this, and that's going to go away. If you want to make some changes at this time, just go to this little icon here, double click, and you're going to go back into camera raw. Maybe you decide there's too much vignette and I want less. Maybe you decide that the exposure is too low and you want it brighter. Maybe you decide that the color is too warm and you want to cool it down. Once you're done, just click OK and back into Photoshop you'll go. At this point, once you're happy, go File, Save a Copy on Computer, decide on the file name. Maybe you want to call this something-edit. Also notice the file type is a PSD by default. That's a Photoshop document. You probably don't want this because you're going to be using your edit to go on your website or attach it in G class. For that, we probably want a JPEG. So select the format down there, click the save button. It's going to ask you what quality you want. I usually do the highest, which is 12. Click OK. And now watch what happens if we go back into Bridge. In Bridge, you now see this one, which is the original file name .jpeg. And over here is the edit. You can see I renamed it. This is the file that you want when you're uploading to your portfolio, or if you're attaching something in uh, G class. And that's basically it. If you go back into Photoshop here, you can close this if you want. You probably want to save it because you may want to make changes at a later date. So click Save. Again, on computer. 
This time, let it save as a PSD. Click OK. And now if we go into Bridge, you'll find a third file. This is the PSD that you just saved. You can now go into Photoshop and close this down. We no longer need it. And here in Bridge, you see the three versions. If you go back to Explorer or Finder, you'll see the original, the edited JPEG, this is the one you're going to use for things like your portfolio or G-Class, and then the PSD, which if you ever want to make a change at a later date, this is the one to use. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Looking forward to seeing your photos, and bye for now.